Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree. I'm Carrie Erickson. And we got a cool show for y'all today. We're at Ladies Night Out at Louisiana Nursery and it's some cool stuff going on tonight. Oh yeah, lots it's of wine. Little wine, little trees, a little Christmas stuff. We got herbs, we got some really neat stuff for y'all. So y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Okay, y'all, this is a cold night in Prairieville over here. It's cold. It is, it is. It's and nice, though. But it's warm in the greenhouse here at Louisiana oh, Nursery. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I feel like I'm in a Hallmark movie. It was the ladies' night out, and Louisiana Nursery does this every year. And we're going to talk to some of the folks from Louisiana Nursery and um, let them talk about some of the things that go on here. From now to Christmas, you come here and get all the stuff you need. Oh, absolutely. Now we want to talk about our sponsors real quick. Okay. All right, Capital City Produce, all of this. These are the prettiest peppers I think I've ever seen. It's just, they're beautiful, they're sweet, they cut really easily, so came quick. We got the garlic, we got the red potatoes, they just, they had everything. They are some good folks. If they don't have Capital City Produce in the store you go to, you need to get them there. And also, French Settlement Sausage. Uh, the best, the best. That green onion sausage, best thing on the grill. We will actually get to eat some of the green onion sausage and pepper jelly. And um, I'm looking uh, forward to that. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I talked to Brad. He said for holidays, you can get injected smoked turkeys from, mm. just call them up. Um, chicken and andouille gumbo. They have green wow. onion sausage, the andouille. Mm -hmm. I talked to him earlier. He brought us the sausage and uh, he's waiting on your call at FrenchSettlementSausage.com. All right, we fixed to get some cooking, so hang on. All right, y'all, I got the man here, the vice president in, and you take care of all the stores around here. Yes. How many stores y'all have? Three in there? Three area? stores, so, as of now. Maybe a couple more on the horizon, we'll see. And y'all do this every year. So this is the first year uh, in three years, so since COVID, or two years, so since COVID, uh, we wanted to do it, in a, do it up in a big way. So uh, this is our last one of the three. We had our Perkins one last week. Uh, Corsi a couple days ago and uh, I think me and Rodney met what about a year ago just naturally I think a trip into the store right right and uh, I never take for granted a good connection so as we kind of solidified the idea that we were gonna we were gonna start this back up uh, it just clicked and I reached out to Rodney and we brainstormed we came up you know with a with an idea to do the, the to bring you guys on board and I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you excited. bro I walked around the store Y'all have everything you need for Christmas. I mean, it's and it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, every other day too. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so tonight is um, there's ladies' night out with wine. You got some music going on. So you can come get your trees. Twenty six vendors at this point. Uh, local artists and uh, you name it, crafts. Uh, we have live music. Uh, we have uh, free wine and, and daiquiris. We got you guys that are. You're going to be kicking off here in just a second, and uh, the traffic has been awesome. The turnout was great. I think had a lot of pent-up demand with you know with our customer base not having it over the last couple of years. So we're we're really excited. And we're 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 completely satisfied with the. Hey, we are proud to be here, Rod. It's good stuff. Good people here, and uh, we're fixing to get you some cooking going. Maybe some people can eat some of this good stuff we got. Yeah, yeah. So here we go, Kara. We're fixing the rocket. Y'all hang on. All right, Kara. The first thing we're doing is um, this French settlement sausage and pepper jelly. Oh, I already got into it. it you I tried it up. To, I should. I did. I, well, I you, to. you got to. I had to. With the French settlement sausage, and uh, Leslie, my wife, makes this pepper jelly. 
Okay. And I'm going to tell you, once you put that on there, and then I went a little crazy extra. I took some other peppers and cut them up and put them in. Oh, you took some of the bell peppers and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Not the hot peppers. Yeah. But um, thanks for Capital City again. Well, you know, I never, I had never heard of pepper jelly until I moved here. I don't oh, know. I don't know. I don't know why. Just I guess that wasn't a thing. Uh, right. Where I'm from was the pepper jelly. Well, when you put the pepper jelly on the sausage, you got two good things going together. So, I think all the folks are starting to come out and starting eating some of the sausage and the pepper jelly uh, and. Well, I'll tell you a story about the peppers. Yeah. Uh, so I was kind of looking over the recipe here, and it was talking about how the seeds have most of the heat right. in them. Well, my friend um, had grown banana peppers and jalapeno peppers. Well, I didn't know anything about the seeds having the heat. So I was going to seed them and pickle them, you know, put them, make some pepper sauce. Those seeds, my hands burned for two days. <laughs> no gloves. No gloves. You learned your lesson. I, I see you got some on today. I, I learned. <laughs> I learned. I Son that. of a gun. Well, we yeah. got the, uh, one of the best things you can put out there for holidays. Mm -hmm. And we got some more coming up. So y'all hang on tight. All right, Kara. This is some neat stuff we're doing here. And whoop, our, It smells wonderful. It is. It, it is. Like it. You smelling that roasted it's garlic. garlic. It's yes. Garlic for sure. Now, what you can do with the herbs you grow and the vegetables you grow is what we got the theme tonight. So, so let's talk a little bit about the stir fry, okay. which um, we have orange and red bell peppers mm -hmm. okay with some chicken we had to put some Uncle Larry's in there oh, of course you got to, you got to right? and what what the flavor is is about what to do with the bell peppers when you actually grow them you know so what do I do what do I do so that's one of them right there mm -hmm. the this is one of the things we had come up with here the honey's good for you mm -hmm. and garlic's great for you oh yeah for sure so I marinated um, honey and the garlic together. Okay. Okay. And then I took some chicken and put it in there. You got to taste that one. Okay. Why don't you get that one a try? You gotta ask me twice. You got a fork around here? Okay. Oh, look at there. Four. Just happen to have one. Prepared. While you taste it, and I'm gonna tell you, we took some of the Capital City garlic. Okay. And I put some olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and roasted them. And you talk about that's some so good, good stuff. Oh, and yeah. you can do anything with this once mm -hmm. you roasted it. So that's oh, another yeah. thing you can do is grow in the garlic. Mm -hmm. You got the honey in the garlic. You got the stir fry. Oh, yeah. I'll, this would be so good spread on garlic bread. Oh, yeah. Toasted bread or crostini. Yeah. And so many things. You know, it, put it in. Put it in here with some chicken. Put some beef. I was going to do the ground meat, but here we go. Okay, there's a few more things for your herbs and vegetables when you get them from Louisiana Nursery. So, we still got more to come. Hang on. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come All by right, today. Sarah, we got a little demonstration on this one here. Yes, now, you've cooked this before. I have. I've cooked it on the show. I've cooked it on the show. And the reason I cooked it on the show is because I had so much of this basil. It was crazy how much I had. Well, 
When we decided to do it for this event, I went outside to get it. I had no more holy basil. That's the holy basil. It froze, and that basil hates the freezing. I, I guess that was what it was, but I got a ton of Thai basil, which is not as, it's a little different. It's got kind of a licorice kind of flavor. Right. I don't particularly care for it in pesto. I personally prefer the sweet basil because, it's, you know, it's just it's got a little bit of a sweeter flavor. I'm not a big licorice fan. So we had to buy this. I didn't think I was ever going to have to buy basil. For the rest of your life. Yes, but I did. Well, tell them how we're going to make it. All right, well, I'm just going to be honest. I measure this with my heart because pesto has a look. So you want it to be just very creamy and just very smooth. Right. So I just I took some garlic bulbs, and this is just how I do my garlic. I take the flat part of the knife, and then you just peel the little skin off of it. And you smell like garlic for a little while. A couple days, maybe. You can repel some vampires pretty, you know, pretty easily. Might want to wear gloves. Might, yeah, you could. Just saying. Most definitely. So I'm you got the garlic. Put some garlic in. And then I'm going to put in some walnuts. Use pine nuts. Pine nuts are a little expensive, but walnuts to me taste just as good. Still got that woody uh, flavor. Like woody, but you want the flavor of the, the vegetables to really show. So this is kind of a mild flavor. Pine nuts does really complement the basil, but this all, this gives it like a different depth. So. And again, I just measure the pine. There we go. That's all you can do. Walnuts in. Okay. Like I said, I just I want the basil flavors to shine, so I'm not gonna put a lot of walnuts in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put in my basil. All right. Real quick. Fresh. Fresh. Fresh as you get, actually. It smells so good. It was clipped off of a plant this morning. Oh wow. Yes. Okay. And then I'm gonna cut it with a little bit of spinach, and this is just—it's not really gonna affect the flavor. You're not really gonna taste the spinach. But it'll give you a really pretty green color and more volume too. And more, and more vitamins. <laughs> you know, some more vitamins in there. Always got to have that. So we're just gonna put a little bit in there. Like I said, I'm just kind of measuring with my heart because you just—you really—it's it's how the the taste. You want to just make sure that it, just, it tastes good and has like a good texture. And everybody's different, so I like mine a little bit more. I don't know, rugged. Maybe. Right, maybe meatier than yeah. juicier. A little bit, yeah. So, and I'm just gonna put this down here and I'm gonna just start. Let it go. And you can already, look how pretty. It's already turning nice. So, I'm gonna add a little bit of corn. Which I love Parmesan cheese, you can never get enough. So you're really chopping up the nuts and the leaves first. Yes, the nuts and leaves first. And then as this starts going and this starts working, I'm going to actually drizzle in some olive oil through the top. And again, that's just, you can use more or less of this. It just depends. I like a lot. So... You gotta have the parm. Well, you gotta have a little bit of parm. Then add a little bit more of the green. Because once you start adding things like parmesan, it takes away some of that green color. All right. And I like the green color. My daughter loves this on pasta. Plus, you had made more room for it, too. Yes, I have. I absolutely have. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make it with roll. Would that be emulsifying? <laughs> and again, like I said, I like mine a little rougher. Right. But it's just, it just depends. And look at how pretty. Oh, I'm digging Isn't it. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can put this with pasta. You can spread this on potatoes. It's so good on potatoes. We've got some crackers. We'll we get them crackers. to taste some of we got We got bell peppers. We can put it on bell peppers. So it's super versatile. Add a little bit more oil to it. Add it with a little bit of tomato and some penne pasta. So good. Well, while we're talking about that, um, we have been making some something else you grow in your garden is the mint. Oh my gosh. Plenty mint. Oh yeah. We got the mint. All right. We made some tea, actually, mm -hmm. and steeped the mint in there. Oh yeah. And we also actually made some uh, simple syrup. So some of them, if you like it a little sweeter or a little more mint, you sprink, put some simple syrup in it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And why don't you try it? We made this earlier today, the tea, you for know, everybody to test. When I came down here, I visited a plantation home. 
I've never had sweet tea with mint, and it's so good. Oh, wow. Let's see if, how it went to, from what you tasted good. before. It's got a little mint. It's, it needs a little alcohol. Yes, it does. It needs a little alcohol. Most tea does. Absolutely. Or we call it Long Island tea after that. Long Island tea by the end. All right, well, we've got too easy, too easy. You can get your herbs right here at Louisiana Nursery. There it goes. Here we go. We got some more stuff coming, so y'all hang on. All right, Karen. We got some more cool stuff going. Boy, they got people in here all over. Karen. I know. Man, it's this so is pretty. Good. This is really good. I know. Now, um, what you got going here is this is a garlic and rosemary potato dish. Okay. And it's so versatile. You can do whatever you want to do with it. You can add spice to it. You can add a little Uncle Larry's to it. You can Cajun it up. You can, you know, just let it go and, and enjoy the flavor of the spices and the herbs. Well, but you said spices and herbs. I did. So, let me tell you, the difference herbs. between the spices and herbs, okay, herbs are from the leaves of the plant, right. okay? okay? Spices come from the root, the bark, and the, the seeds. seeds. Yep, yeah. yep. Essentially, any part of the plant that is not a leaf can be used for seasoning will be called a spice. Okay. Okay. Some plants have both, like cilantro, where you use the leaves mm -hmm. and then the seeds are coriander oh, so you get to use both on there yeah and there are 75 to 100 kinds of herbs and flowers in the National Library of Medicine and that's where they keep them all there and okay. most of those go way back from when oh, they first started yeah. putting them out oh absolutely so I just I just have red potatoes but again you can use whatever you prefer if you like yellow potatoes if you like a little jewel it's totally up to you. These, these gloves don't want to cooperate. We like them Yukon Gold, too. Those are so good. Those are so good. So I'm just cutting them in little quarters. Well, while we're talking about it, let me tell you the most expensive herbs that are out there. Oh, I bet it's saffron. Well, number three is fennel pollen. Okay? It's $8.23 an ounce. Okay? The flavor profile consists of citrus overtones, a bit of anise, and commonly known as the flavor of licorice. You know, for that price, it better make me lose weight. Well, it might have with that kind of price. Now, there's two kinds of saffron on the top. Number two is uh, sorghum saffron. It's $48 an ounce. Okay? Again, that better paint my house. It probably will. Better. <laughs> um, it stems from vitamins and mineral content with potassium, magnesium, vitamin C, and copper. Okay, but that's not the most expensive. There's one more. Super Nihu, that's Nihu, Nihu Saffron. Okay, it's, it's actually known as the red gold. It's $90 an ounce. So, that, is that more expensive than gold? It I might be. Like <laughs> I'll tell you. It goes way back. It's, uh, 3,500 years ago when they started doing this. As a matter of fact, it was so valuable, it caused a war in 1347. So it would take me that many years to save up money to buy that stuff. At least. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the... So I got these guys just quartered. Okay. I got me some garlic chopped up. You uh -huh. can, if you don't want to sit there and chop it, you can uh, buy the minced stuff. Right. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my little mint tea over here. Okay. And then I just got like a big pan. This is so good for Thanksgiving too. This is a good uh, dish. And I'm just going to put my potatoes. I got my pan in here. I'm going to put my potatoes in. I'm going to add the garlic. And believe it or not, the garlic does not burn. I'm real funny about garlic burning. It's yeah, it'll so scorch and scorch. go bitter. It won't because you just cook it at like 375 so it's not it's kind of low and slow almost and you're gonna put a little bit of garlic in there of course we'll have more potatoes in there right and then you're just gonna take a couple of sprigs of rosemary and I just like to pull a little stem out and then, ah. and then I just I'm gonna give it just, just a little rough chop to let the uh, flavors come through right, exactly and I love rosemary it smells like a pine candle I like that. I love it. I like it. I love it. It smells like a pine. I, I mean, I'd, I'd have a candle out of this stuff. If I could. <laughs> but it just smells good, and it's just it's got such a good flavor. It imparts such a good flavor to the potatoes. So once you put those in, you got the garlic, you got the potatoes. 
What you put in a little Uncle Larry, salt and pepper. You can put a little Uncle Larry's, you can put a little season salt, whatever you want. Uh, the ones I, I did for here, I didn't really put anything in. I just kind of wanted the herbs to come. Right, right. And then you're going to get a little bit of olive oil and you're just going to give it a massage. There we go. So just pour a little olive oil in there. Now salt and pepper and flavor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to massage it. Get it friendly. And then make it happy. Right. And then add a little salt and pepper to it. Digging it. And I like the Himalayan pink salt. It's just fancy. It don't taste any different. It's just fancy. I came from the mountain, though. I like to tell people it's, you know, Himalayan salt. <laughs> and a little, you know, a scrunch of uh, black pepper, which is right down. Oh, we got it hidden down here on the side, on the thing. Here we go. And you know, you right. could also do a little bit of, uh, you could also do a little bit of, uh, if you like the everything bagel season, which I love. That's a good flavor. Oh, gosh. So Whoever invented that's probably rich. Well, they're my best friend. That's all I know. I love it. There we go. So, and then you're going to put this in the oven. You can cut, you don't have to cover it. You want to leave it uncovered because you want this to get kind of brown and crispy for an hour. But do it in 30 minute increments. So 30 minutes, take it out, stir it, put it back in 30 more minutes. It's going to come out. They'll be brown. They'll be crispy. They'll get a little char on the top. Char on the top. And then you can you can finish it with a little bit of parsley. Fresh is probably better. Right. You can get that right here at Louisiana Nursery too. Absolutely can. You can grow your own. And it's beautiful. I love it. it yeah, they're gone. they wearing them out they over there. They're totally gone. That's good stuff. Yes, indeed. Super uh, easy. Super all right, easy. We, we, um, we got some more still to come. We got some uh, infused vinegar coming up next. So, all right, Kyle, we moved on to the olive oil department. All but right. first, let's talk about these peppers. Okay, so quick story. I don't like bell peppers. I'm not a fan. Oh. I'm a fan. I grow them, but I don't eat them. Oh. So I was, uh, a while back, I was doing like the keto diet, and I saw this was all over TikTok. Was this uh, snack? And all it is is just whipped cream cheese spread and everything bagel seasoning. And I got two different types down here of everything bagel. Oh, oh. And I got the salt free and the saucy kind. But it's so easy to make and you can make it with any kind of bell pepper. I'm just going to do it with the big bell pepper. And the way I do this, like you get a really sharp knife and I like to run it around the top. And I'm so funny about wasting. I don't like to waste. Right, right. So I save all these seeds and when you pull it out, you know, there's all you see. Look at there. And I just put this in a Ziploc bag in the fridge and then I plant it. And it comes up with more bell peppers than I don't need. <laughs> You can start your own produce stand then. <laughs> I could. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to take this little guy and I'm going to cut him. I'm going to take a little tag. Of well, remember we talked about the tags. If you actually eat it, it's edible. It won't hurt you. That? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't want to try it. Don't try it. I'm going to try it. So I'm going to take the whites, the little pith out. It sounds like a terrible word. It's a little sour or a little... It's a little um, bitter. It's a little bitter. Now these seeds, of course, are not, you know, this is not a spicy pepper. So these seeds are not going to bother you. I just, you know, I'm going to take them out for aesthetic purposes. And I'm just going to cut it to where it's got like a little cup here. So in this little cup, I'm going to take the whipped cream cheese. This is way easier to spread. You can get the plain kind, but it all tastes the same. Get a spoonful of this. I'm just going to fill this little cup. With. Boy, that makes me hungry doing that. It's so good, and it's so easy. And, it's, and, and it's the fun. more you like, the more you can put in there, too. The more you can put. You can add a little Parmesan cheese to this, a little bit onion. What? Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. And I think I'm going to go with the salty. I'm feeling a little salty today with the salted everything bagel. And all this is, this is just like sesame seeds. It's kind of oniony. Tastes kind of like a bagel. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Look at that. Woo-wee. So easy. Well, since we're talking about that, we're also talking about what we've done with these olive oils. Okay. okay? Now we've done some really neat stuff with the olive oil. This guy here, this is the garlic infused olive oil. Okay. So, like you said, you can make your uh, vinaigrette with it or whatever you'd like to if you're a right. big garlic fan. Mm -hmm. 
okay now this one is the lemon we took the zest around of oh, three different wow. lemons and put it in the olive oil it's been soaking a while and it's got a good little lemony kick too oh, you can actually nice. take that and put it over your um, everything bagel there oh wow and put it over it. Let's try that. okay now this one is the pepper infused olive oil. That looks like pepper sauce. Now it's oh, not hot peppers. Uh -huh. Okay, I used the Anaheim and some red bell pepper and so put it in there. Spice so it's more sweet than Right, it's got the pepper flavor. Okay. Now this one was my favorite we did. It's the sun-dried tomatoes That's with basil. Like so we want to we got to put that on a cracker and try that one. Oh, for sure. Got to, got to. Sure. So that, there's some more things yeah. you can do with your herb garden just oh, there's plenty of things out there to do and y'all herbs are so easy to grow i, I have a brown bulb <laughs> and i have i am up to my ears in herbs believe it or not and it's just it's they're so easy to grow and they come back you know we had a garden bed that we moved from one side of our yard to the other we thought the herbs were gone they weren't gone they, they grow back they came right back so no way so easy to grow and there's nothing like fresh I mean, it really does make a huge difference. Awesome. Hey, there's some more things for you. We got a couple more. Y'all hang on. We're coming right back. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout. Come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. Okay, Kara, this, this has been fun. We've done some so cool fun. stuff with the herbs. I'm, I'm going to tell you, we've had so much fun with this. Absolutely. Our sponsors, we need to give them another shout out. Right. Yeah, I'm going to say Capital City Produce has oh. rocked it. This, they, they just, they knocked it out of the park with this. I'm going to say Taft's. You rock brandy. They're all doing great. Doing great. And French settlement sausage. Yes indeed. That sausage went fast. Man, they wore him out over there. Yes, that's they that's did. that's good stuff. Yeah. Now um I, I'm gonna try your um, keto style. Okay. But uh I gotta kick it up a little bit. Just just a little maybe a, a, a little bit of whoop cream on there and um maybe you can tell the folks we'll see them next week while I'm gonna try it, maybe. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, this has been Cajun Living and Cooking. We're glad to have y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>